tutorial. So today I'm going to show you some basic collision detection in 3DXNA. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bounding box for our player. Uh, there you go. And then we're going to need to tell it what its dimensions are. I don't remember what the dimensions for this car is, so I'm just going to make them up. But if you have Blender open, check the dimensions and make them that. I suggest making it uh, either a square because a square or a cube, square base, sorry, and that way when you're rotating the thing it's always going to be the same uh, what's the word? It'll, it'll work constantly. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a position dot x comma position dot y comma position dot z okay pose not position okay then we're gonna need a width a height I'm just gonna say four comma four comma four and for each of these or for just these we do minus two minus 2, which is half of 4, so I can try and center it at the center of my model. Uh, okay, new, new bounding box. Now I have to turn it into a vector. And there you go. This is your bounding box. Now let's copy and paste this and put it directly into the reference point. Okay, so bounding box box. So let's make it public so we can access it outside and it'll be the exact same thing pretty much um, and also you should check the dimensions for whatever your reference model is and so here we go now each frame we're going to want to update our box so so box you want to new bounding box it's kind of annoying having to do this I have to instantiate so many variables. Okay, so we just updated our box. And actually, no, right there is fine. Okay, so now that we have our boxes, we're going to want to add a method in which we can detect collisions. So we'll do public bool process collisions. Then we're going to have a float a dz and a float a dx, comma, float dz. Okay. So now we're going to do, we're going to, need to input a bounding box. So if box dot please intersects. Uh, let's call it something else. Uh, other box. If box that intersects other box, then we're going to return true. Else, otherwise we'll return. Oops. Let's make it prettier. Get rid of these curlies. Okay. So that's all like, we need to do for collisions. Actually, no, it's not. I'm joking. Uh, instead of updating it up here, we are going to remove our box, and we're going to put them down here. And we want these variables to be slightly different names, so we we'll call them dx and dz, just so we don't get confused with stuff. 
then we'll do plus dx, and then we'll do plus dz. I mean, plus dz. Okay. So now we're going to need to get a bounding box. And our bounding box is going to be our reference. It's going to be our reference box. So that's what I'll call it. And down here. As you can see, actually, I didn't do this last tutorial. I made changes to this. This is very important. Replace this section on your code with this new section if you were following with the previous tutorials. So this basically sets what the change in X and the change in Z are depending on the input. And then I'm adding it to the actual position later. So now I can handle collisions much easier. So now I'll process collision and I'm going to have reference reference box comma dx comma zero. Now I want to handle these separately. It's much like doing a projectile motion equation in physics. I want to see if uh, it's colliding in the x direction or if it's colliding in the z direction. And depending on which direction it's colliding, I can alter my uh, outcome. Okay, so here we go. We're going to have a bool, and it's going to be collision x is equal to, and the bool collision z is equal to. So if collision x dx can equal 0, if collision z dz is going to equal 0. Alright, so in game we're going to have an issue, so we're just going to go here, rp dot box, and everything should work. Okay, let's test this out. Let's see if I run into this. Uh, apparently, it doesn't work. Let me pause one sec. And I'll just figure something out really quick so I can do this quicker. So it's less All right, free. so I just made a little dumb mistake. Uh, it was nothing. My logic was perfectly correct. Okay, so basically what I did wrong was instead of doing minus on both sides to find the center, or minus on the left side plus on the right side, I did minus on both sides. So it turned out that I, all I was doing was just making a point in space. So the collisions weren't working properly. Okay, so basically I'm going to go over what I did. Uh, I made this variable size so I could set the size of whatever the bounding box was, whatever I wanted it to be. And so the way you construct the bounding box is uh, the first vector 3 is basically the bottom corner. The, like I would say the bottom left front corner of your box and this is the top right back corner of your box and in my case I'm making a cube so all you have to do is just subtract half the width subtract half the length add half the width add half the length and then you want to give it some height so I just added the size made it a cube and this one has no add addition to it I did the same thing for the player, and I said both of their things were 20. The size was 20. I don't know, that might be a little big. I can try other ones as well, other sizes. But basically, I did that, and I used the game to... I update the player with the box. The player takes the box and it puts it in here and it detects dx and dz independently so what it does is it predicts where it's going to be in the next frame so I would add the dx over here and add the dz over here and here and here so basically if 
this bounding box in the next frame collides with this um, other box, the reference box, then I'm going to tell it to stop. So if it collides on the x-axis, I'm going to tell dx to equal zero, and then it won't, and then it'll add nothing to the position. If uh, collision on the z-axis is true, then yeah, you know what happens. All right, so that's basically it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I don't know all of the above. And have a good day, YouTube. Also, I'm going to be making some libgdx tutorials for developing libgdx.